Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Label Live right here with your boy, Leo. Here we bring you inspiration and we give you insights on how to live a better life. Come on, that's what we're talking about. It's another morning. It's a beautiful morning. Tuesday morning. It's a cold morning, ladies and gentlemen. That one I can't get away from. And But it's a still, it's a blessed morning, ladies and gentlemen. And we want to thank God so much for waking us up to see another beautiful day. We want to thank God for the opportunity to have life, the health, and the strength that we have is a blessing from God. Your health may be different to someone else's. Your energy level may be different to someone else's, but it's a blessing from God and we're going to give thanks for it, ladies and gentlemen, nonetheless. It is Tuesday morning. Yesterday, I know you had a wonderful time with your boy, Adrian. And today, we're going to be having another great session as well because the one that has to present to us is someone that we're used to. It's a familiar face and we glean a lot from his words when they spring all over our lives all right ladies and gentlemen so we just want to jump on the chat this morning to hail out some of our people and we want to say big up to every single one of you and bless morning to you guys let's see who we have on the chat this morning this morning we got on gladys miller good morning to you my dear jack de lutchman carolyn garraway lillian or millie good morning to you taro Terror is in the house, always. Big up to my boy. Shaman voices inside. Jeremiah Ramu. We got Gail Achibal. Good morning to you. Davika Van Lewin and Shalon Osborne. Candice Alexander. Jerry Collado, dung from the Philippines. We got Louise Edwards. We got Vera Roper. Doreen Reed Nelson and Andrea Frederick. Uh, Kimberly Thompson, good morning to you as well. Timothy Benjamin, good morning to you, my bro. Dixie and Lewis and Monica Byam. Suri Bernard, good morning to you and the entire family. Cecilia George, good morning to you and my boy, Leroy George. Alice Solomon is in the house. Good morning to you, Alice John. Minetta Campbell, Patsy Gregg, Veronica Charles, uh, Denison McIntyre, uh, No Bead, No Rab. I wonder if I always pronounce that name correct, but whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, good morning to my boy. Good morning to my boy. Uh, uh, coming on the inside, we got Sheila Hussein on the inside as well. You know, uh, it's just a blessed morning this morning, um, not for any particular reason, just because, you know, we are children of God. It's always a blessing to wake up to see another day. It's always a blessing to, you know, be in the land of the living where we can effect change in some way or the other. You know, society needs to change. You know, the church needs change. Our lives needs change. You know, the young generation, they need change. Family needs change. So our mindset needs change. So there's a lot of things that we can mm -hmm. do. There's a lot of changes that we still need to make. And so waking up in the land of the living, waking up with this opportunity is a blessing from God. Because now we can do something about it. I remember, I remember um, the rich man and Lazarus. They both lived their lives and they died. And they went to, as Jesus gave the story, they went to different parts of the Hadean realm. And one of the things that I remembered is that the rich man wanted to make a change. He wanted to make a change. He wanted to bring information to his brothers because he wanted them to do things differently. So he wanted to effect change in a place, in a realm where he was no longer existing. And he couldn't. Lazarus said, you know, what, what is set is set. You know, we can't go from here to there and there to here. And what is set is set. And I want to say that to let you know that when you wake up every single morning, 
it's not just i'm not just trying to you know make you feel good and trying to you know just use words no it's really a blessing this is the opportunity to make the change and the changes all right when you leave this realm there is nothing else you can do about this realm all right this is the chance to talk to your children this is the time to love your spouses this is the time to fix broken relationships this is the time to help people this is a time to sort your life out ladies and gentlemen this is the time so let's use the time wisely all right so blessings go to every single one of you on the program here and um you know uh, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us every single morning. Those of you who are faithful to this program, thank you so much. We have uh, on the YouTube, we have Diana John. We have, uh, I can't remember, KCCSVG, who he said he was, Cecil. All right, I think Cecil. Um, Beulah Tate, uh, Nicolette Samuel, and Kiba's Place. Good morning to you, Kiba. Uh, good morning to those on YouTube. We just want to say big up to every single one of you. We can. We try not to leave anybody out, although we leave a bunch of people out every single morning. But we try not to because you're special to us. You mean a lot to us. You're our peeps. All right. Uh, not peep as in, you know, spying. You know, you're not a Marco. You're not, you're not that type. I'd not say that is who you are. You are our peeps. We're using peeps in a young people way this morning. Oh, gosh. I just try to understand me. Peeps. All right. You're our people this morning. All right. And I know seeing uh, Freddie, my boy Freddie, jumping in here with Angie Sandesi. All right. So this morning we're going to be going on and, um, I started a trend. I don't even know if it was even a trend, but um, we had two Jamaicans coming on last week together with um, a Trinidadian, uh, an American. You know, we started using this term, you know, delicacy. So we had Jamaican delicacies on the program and we had uh, Trinidadian delicacy and we had the South African delicacy and whatnot, whatnot, whatnot. But, I don't even know how to say this one here this morning. I don't know what to say about this one here this morning. If it's Trinidadian delicacy or if it's a Reuben delicacy, you know, but whatever it is this morning, you're going to be getting a treat. That's exactly what I know. All right. But uh, we, I mean, I have to say Trinidadian delicacy. He, 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 he is that wouldn't leave, you know, they say Trini to the bone. Yeah. That wouldn't leave the marrow of his bone. That, Trini, that that Trinidadian essence would not leave his marrow. All right, so we have to say Trini delicacy, and um, but we will put a sprinkle of Aruba and stuff in there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you go to different countries and you have different experience. So you have a you have, to have a little sprinkle of Aruba and stuff because he's a part of the culture now. But nonetheless, we're going to be blessed this morning by this young man. He has been doing a tremendous job. If you listen to him on um, uh, San Nicholas Church of Christ. They have a YouTube channel and they go live on Facebook. Uh, I've been listening. If you listen to him uh, there, you will be blessed every Sunday morning. So I want to encourage you to do that as well. But before we do that, I want to try to sing a song. You know, uh, my voice just seemed to be taking a while to form the way it was. Um, and I'm going to tell you here and now, the Lord knows, the Lord knows all things. And if by any chance he decided that my voice is not going to come back the way it used to be, then blessed be the name of the Lord. He gives and he takes away. But we're going to use whatever we have. That's what I'm telling you this morning. We're going to use whatever we have this morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So let's sing this song. All right. As I say, blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to sing this song this morning. <clears throat> the name of the Lord is... A strong tower, yet yeah, the righteous run into it. And they are saved. The name of the Lord is, yeah. A strong tower, and the righteous run into it. And they are saved. Come on, sing with me still. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Come on. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most I sing with me. Come on. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it. And they are saved. The name of the Lord is yeah. A strong tower and the righteous run into it, and they are saved. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Come on, holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Most high. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sing with me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord most I. That's what we're talking about. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, God is good. God is good. Let's sing this one. Let's sing this one. I will bless thee, O Lord. Sing with me. Huh? I will bless thee, O Lord. If you want, you can lift your hands and praise God with a heart of thanksgiving. Come on. I will bless thee, O Lord. I'm hearing you singing. Come on. I'm hearing the parts. I will bless you, O Lord. I will bless you, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, yeah, I will bless you, O oh Lord. Lift those hands high, come on. With my hands lifted high, and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless you, O oh Lord. One more time, lift those hands. With my hands lifted high, and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless you, O oh Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless you, O oh Lord. That's what we're talking about. <clears throat> bless the name of God, ladies and gentlemen. Bless the name of God. Don't get it twisted. But when we talk about blessing the name of God, we're talking about praising God's name, ladies and gentlemen. You know, there's no other name to be praised. There's no other name worthy of praise, ladies and gentlemen, than the mighty name of God, than the name of Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. No other name on the heaven like such a name, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to bless his name. We're going to praise his name as long as we have air in our lungs, ladies and gentlemen. As long as we are alive, we're going to bless the name of God. And if you know me, whether my voice is the way it is, whether my voice is the way it was, you know, it doesn't matter how my voice is. If you know me, you know we're going to be blessing the name of God, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if that's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. I don't know if I should wait until my voice is healed or if I should just be, you know, using what I have. I think the former is the better one, but the latter feels better. <laughs> I wonder if you catch my drift. The former feels better. I feel like I should let my voice heal, but praising the name of God feels like the better thing to do, you know? So, um whatever whatever you know um we're gonna sing we're gonna have a good time uh but most importantly we're gonna bless the name of god ladies and gentlemen he's the one uh that is in control and he's the one that deserves the attention so this morning we just want to take a little moment to sit back we want to encourage you to sit back grab your cup of coffee grab your hot drink 
Uh, if you're under your cover still, you know, uh, uh, you know, pull your cover, you know, be cozy, but relax because we got something that we want to present to you this morning. We got some information that we want to present to you this morning coming from the one and only the man himself. He's a guy that I grew up with. Um, I want to say grew up because I, I just feel like we've known each other forever. You know, whatever amount of years that we've known each other for, it feels like it's 10 times that amount, you know. Um, he's a guy that, you know, I really love and appreciate. I appreciate his, his love for the Old Testament because I love the Old Testament, but I'm not nearly as close or competent in the Old Testament as he is. So I love listening to him. You know, I love when he shares stuff because because I love the Old Testament, when he unfolds stuff, you know, I I I I dare, you know, I'm excited with him, you know. So um I want to present that guy to you this morning. As I said, Trinidadian delicacy with a sprinkle of a Reuben joy all right ladies and gentlemen at this time i want you to sit back and enjoy uh this program as we welcome to you the one and only the man himself we haven't seen him in a little while but we present to you this time the man himself randolph joseph big up to my boy randy joseph this morning welcome to the program this morning randy how are you man Hey, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so man, much. Man, it's great. It's always a pleasure to have you on label, you know, sharing your beautiful thoughts. It's always a pleasure. Um, you know, I thought you wasn't going to come on today and I was I was kind of scared, but not scared. I know if you didn't come on today, you would be on another time, but I was kind of scared. I was like, I was looking forward to it myself, you know. That's why I was kind of scared. But <laughs> um, all things work together for good. You're here. And that's all. I'm just happy. That's all for me, you know. But, um, you know, I pray that I trust that your wife is doing well. Uh, I trust that, you know, the congregation is doing well. You started some um, some, some work. You started some new stuff in Aruba as you went over there. You know, you went into some of it in details as we chat um, uh, in times past. You know, you want to um, just tell us a little bit about, you know, how it's going, how, how it's keeping, you know, how how tiring is it? <laughs> we are talking oh, yeah. about being tired. <laughs> that's, um, that's... But, um, but, but how, how is the, the work? How is everything work? It, it's moving along. Um, glory be to God for that. Um, we're still in the process of raising funds to repair our building. Right. Um, so a lot of time going into raising funds for that. Um, but okay. service wise, we we started a the rehabilitation program. Right. Um. Sort of last night when you did not hear back from me is because <laughs> we um have well Monday to Saturdays we have different classes for our clients. Okay. And so Mondays is spiritual advice, and so last night that's what we were doing every Monday night to come together, um, and we learn spiritual disciplines. To help with the rehabilitation um, process, you know, and then throughout the rest of the week, you know, yeah, the NA meeting, they had um, different stuff. We were able to add um, group therapy on Saturdays. No, that's and good. Yeah, we had some some <clears throat> like-minded people that join us, so we we we've been growing. We went from um, once or twice a week using other people's resources to right. know that we actually have our own program. Wow. Right? Is that week? Wow! So we wow. give God thanks for that, man. Man, that's good because <laughs> um, some of the things that you're doing, you know, these are things that I advocate for. You know, um, I want to see things like that. You know, so um, I really appreciate your work, bro. Um, keep it up. Continue doing what you're doing, and um, I'm cheering on for you and I'm praying for you. You know, um, yeah, because I really, I, I really think that the people that I'm going to say we, the people that we run from, these are the people we should be running to. You know, I did, I did, um, I did a session on label a few weeks ago, you know, talking about not being afraid to get your hands dirty. You know, these are the people we should be dabbling with, you know, you know, sharing with, you know, allowing your, your, your light, you know, to be a part of their life rather than running from their darkness, you know. Right. So, um, I, I advocate and I, I love what you're doing. Um, sincerely from the heart because these are things that I, I teach and I encourage. So, man, I really appreciate it. Bro, I'm going to turn the floor over to you because I'm willing and I'm ready to listen to what you have to say this morning. <laughs> you know, yeah, so I'm yeah. going to turn the floor over to you. 
you know, every time both of us end up on this program, we have to, you know, something or the other, some way or the other, we always go back to some of our, a little dabble in our past, but I hope we don't get into that this morning. You know, let's leave that where it is. <laughs> yeah, I think, <laughs> and, uh, I think everyone... And let's press enough. toward the mark, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> So, so take it away, bro. You know, the flow is yours. You yeah. enjoy. And I'm, I'm ready to hear what you got to offer this morning as you dabble back into the Old Testament. So the flow is yours, bro. Take it away. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, of course, I just had a bit of um, apology. My tech team will be more up after. Um, I had some images to share with you. That not happening. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> so, um, it's, it's, a, it's a lesson. It's a lesson. Um, we are all familiar, and I think when I, um, when I say we all, anyone that read Bible, even if you may not know where they are, we are familiar with Israel's wilderness wanderings, right? Um, you know that there is a there is a time in their life where God took them from Egypt, and they journeyed to Mount Sinai, and then they journeyed to um, this area that they basically called, you know, their promised land. Yeah, uh, because it was promised to them, and they did not want to go. Right? <laughs> I always love that story because the back half of that story is that when God told them, you know, go back in the wilderness for forty years, they woke up the next morning ready to ready to go. You know, they had their sword, they had a shield, everybody ready for battle, and Moses said, "Don't you dare." <laughs> If you try to go now, God is not with you. You already told you what is going to happen. Go back, you know, and, and all these things, these things happen. Um, but the wilderness um, really helps us, I, I believe, um, identify aspects of our Christianity that we ourselves may find challenging, and we may not always know why. Right. Right. Um, I think if we could be honest enough, we we could be able to admit that where we understand, you know, we could see some sometimes, you know, God here and some things God doing and it might build with faith today, but then tomorrow something happens and I was like, why? Like, you know, yeah. like, why yeah. all these things keep happening? Um, I think the the wilderness wanderings has images that help us to be able to appreciate um just basic daily aspects of our lives. Because the things that happen in the wilderness are really problems that occur in our everyday life. And I think one of the most unfortunate things is detaching God from our everyday life. You know, oh, wow. Yeah. We have a very bad habit of trapping God in a Bible class or trapping God in a ministry or trapping God in service. So much so that, you know, if a person is not there in these different little pockets of things that the church creates, they have no idea what to do. And so where we hold you on a Sunday, we turn back to somebody else on a Monday. Right. You know, and a lot of times we can't connect with God on a Monday, so we just go back to what we know. And so through all the wilderness, there are these images that pop up. Um, and of course, this is not a original thought of mine. Um, it actually um, starts with what we, what we put to our Hebrew <coughs> It would be the people that um, would have written on Scripture um, literally over a thousand years ago. Something I think we tend to miss is that Hebrews had the Old Testament Bible way longer than the church did. You know, and so their understanding of it still holds some value, still holds some weight. Um, one of the things that they identified, um, and that's what we're going to look at today, which is why I apologize, I don't have the images for you, but we're going to look at today uh, some of the things that pop up, and those are simply trees, right? I uh, want to look at three trees that pop up in scripture, um, but more so in the wilderness, because throughout their wilderness journeys, there are these trees that are going to continue to pop up. And what we understand by it is that these pink pictures are these thin messages for Israel while they were going through the wilderness and by extension us. I think um, if you if you think about it, long enough you'd realize Christ would do the same thing where with the fig tree. Because in Christianity everybody knows the message of the fig tree. Where he yeah. the fig tree because they didn't live by you you and I grew up in the same church. We hear so much after so much about the barren fig tree. And that's the picture behind it. What he was doing was not a, a foreign thing is that 
they understood these trees were mentioned for reasons. All right? And so for the sake of time, uh, <laughs> see a practice and a practice. So for the sake of time, <laughs> I will take you take one scripture that that carries the thought of two or thirty three trees, right? Right. And that is Jeremiah <clears throat> seventeen, verse five. So in, in the text, Jeremiah is speaking against um, some practices that Israel has, and he's going to use, um, well, some trees, but in our Bible, it translates as bush. I always like that translate as bush, even though bush. trees. Yeah, so Jeremiah 17, from verse 5, it says this. It says, Thus says the Lord, First is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Verse 6 says, for he will be like a bush in the desert and will not see when prosperity comes. But he will live in stony waste in the wilderness, a uh, land of salt without inhabitants. Right? And so it almost reads kind of like a proverb. Um, you know, uh, this is this man who trusts in his own strength. And this is one of the things that I really want us to be mindful of. God has no intentions of allowing us to lead our own Christianity or lead our right. own life. That has never been in the heart of God. And so one of the things we have to be very careful of is when we try to take Christianity into our own hands, whether intentionally or unintentionally, we have to learn and develop this belief or this discipline, rather, of going to God first. Yes, sir. Right? And so in verse number six, you're going to see that he says, the man who trusts in his own heart and who turns away from the law, he says, for he will be like a bush. Now, the word bush here, um, that is an English translation. Yeah. But it, um, of course, when he wrote it in Hebrew, he actually said that he will be like an arar. An arar is a, is a type of tree, right? Um, now, to appreciate the arar, you have to also consider what it would be like to walk through the desert. So imagine walking through the desert could never be easy. I remember love me to appreciate that in the fact that there is nothing and there is right. nothing. <laughs> right. That is different. <laughs> and so you could imagine anything that <clears throat> looks valuable to your sustenance in the desert, you are going to chase after it. Right? That's why in those even in those movies when they see the oasis that they run. Yeah. Feet, right? The around bush looks tantalizing it is green it is it is tall it is nice and it has <clears> these <throat> fruits on it that are about the size of a grapefruit and the fruit itself looks appealing at least on the tree the idea then why he says the man who trusts in his own strength and turns away from the lord why he looks like an arar bush is because an arar bush looks good the fruit while on the tree looks good however when you take that fruit and you open it, you will find that there is nothing inside the fruit. What? <laughs> the fruit is completely empty. <laughs> what? <laughs> right? And so what Jeremiah is, 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 is giving us is this very almost scary image. When, the person, when a person trusts in their own strength and turns away from God, they look good. They look like they're bearing fruit. They look like Things working out and they're successful and, and I good. I didn't need the church to begin with, and they look good. He says, but really and truly, their spiritual state they are empty. Oh my goodness! They are only looking good, right? <laughs> and so the Arar bush doesn't just pop up in Jeremiah. That's why Jeremiah <coughs> uses it to describe this person. It pops right. up in the wilderness while they are going through. They are going to be some Arar bushes while they are walking through, and the image is what Jeremiah uses. So Jeremiah borrows that thought and says, listen, when you try to trust in your own strength, when you say, I don't need all this church thing, I don't really feel this or because something happened, what he's saying is, yo, you may actually start getting stuff. Because I tell you all the time, I'm not so naive to think that you need God to buy a house. You can get that on your own. Yeah. You don't need God to buy a car. That is all your goal. You, can, you don't need church for that. And But the problem is, what you end up doing is, like Jeremiah says, look like an Arab bush. You look successful because you have all the things. Uh, but there's no depth to your, to your spirituality. There is no depth to your soul. You're empty inside. Right? That's the Arab bush. The second bush, which is 
um, juxtaposed to the Arab verses, from big contrast, is if we continue reading. Now, while they listen, if, if, you, if your people are, that read it with it, I hope they read um, the text even on their own, this is going to sound very familiar to Assam, right? It's almost going to read verbatim, and I believe Jeremiah does this intentionally. From verse number seven, he says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose trust is the Lord. And I always love that. He, he trusts in the Lord, and his trust is the Lord. Right? Mm -hmm. So his faith is the fact that God exists, <laughs> right? And not just that he does stuff, right? He says in verse eight, and now pay attention to how verse eight reads, and it's going to sound like a familiar psalm to you. He says, for he will be like a tree planted by the water. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. Right? Because <clears throat> I think he intentionally does this. Because he says, um, planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and will not fear when the heat comes. The word tree, again, just like bush, <laughs> I um, this tree is actually translated as the acacia tree. Now, the acacia tree is by and large, one of the most, uh, not one of, is the most important tree in, in Hebrew history. Because the acacia tree is what Moses is going to be told by God to use to build the Ark of the Covenant. Right? Okay. So some people, when they go back to read, uh, Moses commands to build in the Ark of the Covenant, I pray you do it after the, after the labor, you would realize that God tells him to use an acacia tree. The reason why this reads so similar to Psalm chapter number one is because I believe the, the writer in Psalm chapter number one is also referencing an acacia tree. Because the acacia tree is very important. In Hebrew and Middle Eastern terminology, the acacia tree was known as the gift of the desert. And the reason it was known as the gift of the desert is because it is the most reliable tree that exists in their space. Right? If you have Look in the verse, um, almost your eyes in your Bible, ears on me, but I'm not a preacher, I talk on a Sunday morning. <laughs> um, verse 8 says, it, um, for he will be like a tree planted by the water. Now, this is the person who doesn't do, who, who doesn't just trust in the Lord, because trusting in the Lord could only carry you that far, because trusting in the Lord means, well, God do all this stuff for me, so I believe in him. Well, what yeah. if God doesn't do this stuff for you? Do you still believe in him? Mm, wow. Right? So he says, he doesn't just trust in the Lord, but he also trusts the Lord. So, even if it doesn't work out the way I want it to, I still believe God because I trust God. I trust yeah. God as the spirit rather than God as the provider. Amen. Right? She says that person who <clears throat> trusts in the things God do, but also just in God's presence, this person will be like an acacia tree, but he will be like an acacia tree next to water. And here's why this is beautiful. An acacia tree, if left without water, looks like a diet. Right? And this is why it's opposite to the Arar bush. The Arar bush looks healthy, look good. If you are in the desert and you see an acacia tree that has not been next to water, next to an Arar bush, you are going to choose the Arar bush every time. Wow. Because an acacia tree that is not next to water looks like a diet. Remember back in with the how are we back to back in with the Leo? Yeah. <laughs> Remember back in the day where you used to call my root out of a dry yes. I used to, You know, I was single at that time and grooming was the worst. Poor day. <laughs> had to be trying to remind me to groom myself. <laughs> right? But oh back in the past. Good time. The arar bush looks like a root out of a dry grub. <laughs> but an arar bush could go years. And I mean years. Eight, nine, ten years without water. Whoa. It would look like a dry, it looked like a diet. Whoa. Right? However, once an acacia tree comes into contact with sufficient water, it is going to bear fruit every time. Okay. So the acacia tree was loved because of its reliability. Wow. An acacia tree will always provide fruit once it comes in contact with water. Wow. And so Jeremiah says. Unlike the Arar bush that just looks good but bears no, no usable fruit, the Arar tree, as long as it's connected to water, uh, and this is where the, 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 the mind of God needs to come in, as long as we are connected with God, we will always bear fruit. Because the acacia tree represented reliability. <clears throat> and this is why I love that God told Moses, build the ark of the covenant using um, the wood from acacia tree. It's because Israel had to learn that God is 
always reliable. That there is no point in time where God does not follow through with his word. And so Jeremiah gives this to contrast. He says, on one hand, listen, a man who trusts in himself is like an arrow bush. You're just looking good, but he has no real depth or no real substance to it. Yeah. Right? Uh, but a man who's connected to God is like an acacia tree. As long as he's connected, he will always bear fruit. Wow. The beauty of an acacia tree is that once it's connected to water, its entire look changes. And again, I wish I had the pictures that they show. Mm. The yeah, I wish you had pictures. It, it goes from these dry branches, uh, brick, that brick, looking broken and brittle, to this beautiful tree that is full of, full of green um, leaves and some nice small fruits and flowers. And it provides shade because one of the beauties of the acacia tree is because of how it grows it is a tree that you use for shade right it's a tree that doesn't just provide you with the wood because it's strong it doesn't just provide you with the seeds because it was useful it also provides you with shade and it helps us understand the purpose of our christianity when we connect to god we don't just become useful for god we also become useful to others around us so where God will use the Akisha to build his his his, his um, reminder to Israel of who he is, mm -hmm. the Akisha tree also provides shade to those who need it. So the child of God is connected to God. He becomes useful to God, yes, but he also becomes useful to others around him. Amen. That is the beauty of tree number two, wow. the Akisha tree, right? The third tree is the Tamarisk tree. Um, the Tamarisk tree, we need to use Jeremiah for this, and, and this is where we'll finish. The Tamarisk tree is mentioned as plain as I could find it um, in Genesis, right? And it's a nice thing that I love how, how it reads here because it makes my lesson so much easier. In Genesis chapter 21, um, Abraham is getting into his years, right? Um, he has experienced God in an amazing way because after all the trouble that um, happened between Lot and between Hagar and Ishmael and Sarai, all these different things, um, Avrahim comes and he has a son and his heart is set solely on the just serving God. And I always love this image because if you are familiar with the way it reads, we're going to read chapter 21, verse 33. And it is a picture of Abraham just saying, God, thank you. Which is why chapter 22 opens up with, with the Bible saying, God, com God comes in and God tests him. Because 21 ends with an image of somebody who trusts God totally. And so 22. And a nice um, challenge for anybody, you're going to realize that 22, that whole all eyes are offering, there is actually no mention of the word faith in that chapter. He actually uses a word called faith. Because what he wanted from Abraham now was reverence. Because what he got from Abraham was faith. And so chap chapter 21, verse 33, Abraham does something that we will just read over it. <laughs> right? But it's actually really important. So in verse 33 of, of Genesis 21, he says, um, Abraham planted a tamarisk tree at Beersheba, and there he called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Now, to, to, to read Abraham's story um, long enough, calling on the name of the Lord is Abraham's worship. Right? He, he had set up an altar in Bethel, and Bethel was one of the places of worship. Here in Beersheba, for whatever reason, he always journeys to Beersheba, right? Is this hub of his. He's well into his ears. He has a son, and he sits, and he plants a tamarisk tree. Now, something I have to be very mindful of is Moses is very specific in what he records. Why Moses goes out of his way to record that this... Oh, God, I literally only do. He plants a tree in Beersheba and go away. <laughs> that is literally it. The tamarisk tree was very important. But the tamarisk tree was a tree of promise. Leo, you don't plant a tamarisk tree for yourself. I know you don't do your garden. I know much garden you make with you. <laughs> but I know you don't do your garden. Whenever you make up your mind to plant a tamarisk tree, you don't plant that for yourself. You will never see the fruits of it. Wow. You don't even plant that for Eden because he will not see the fruits of it. 
Wow. The tree takes so long to grow that the tamarind tree is planted for even children. Wow. And so what the tamarind tree has always been used of is to symbolize Abraham understands. This is not just my God. I'm not just doing this for me. I'm not even just doing this for my son. I'm doing this for my generations. And so what Abraham is doing is Abraham is, is presenting to God an offering that says, I am going to do something in this life that is not just going to impact my son or my children, it's going to impact their children as well. And so the tamarisk tree has always been taught. When you plant a tamarisk tree, you are not planting it for yourself. You are planting it for the generations to come. Wow. And so the question is always asked, wow. what are you doing in your life to help impact the next come generation? On. Come on, come on. Because every every Christian is called to plant a tamarisk tree, metaphorically. <laughs> because a tamarisk tree says, God, I trust you enough that if my faith and my, my service to you could impact the next generation and generations to come. come on, and so come this on. is Abraham believing God's promise to him that listen, I'm going to bless a generation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bless the nation too. This is you gonna have the, the, the many children. Remember, Abraham never see no children that he cannot call. Abraham could have found all the children. Yeah. But when he, when he realizes Isaac is here, <clears throat> he returns to Beersheba, and he plants a tamarisk tree. Because it, in planting a tamarisk tree, what you are now doing is trusting that your children are going to have children that can enjoy it. Because a tamarisk tree, you don't ever plant a tamarisk tree for yourself, um, for your own, for your own self to enjoy. You plant yeah. a tamarisk tree trusting that people are going to come after you to enjoy. This is literally Abraham saying, God, I believe you. Amen. Right? Wow. And so you and I know are always challenged, and it is a challenge for the day. What exactly are you doing in your life to impact the, gener the next generation? Right, I really wow. question are you planting any tamarisk trees at all? Because we have a Christianity for whatever reason that is way too selfish to be genuine. Everybody doing everything for themselves, everybody coming to service for a word for themselves, everybody going to God for themselves. But a tamarisk tree has always been a representation that I don't do everything for me, I do stuff for to impact others as well. And so these are the three trees of the wilderness that I want to highlight. There are more, but Lord have mercy. These are the, the three that I wanted to highlight for the label um, service. They are a bush that says, I don't need God to be successful. And it garners some success, but that success is doing. That success, that success is empty. Right. Whereas you have the acacia tree that doesn't always look pretty. But as long as that tree is connected to its source, as long as we are connected to God, we are always going to be a tree. Always. Because it is the most reliable tree. And then you have the tamarisk tree that you don't ever plan for yourself because every Christian has to be reminded we do not serve God strictly for ourselves. We experience God in our own life and then we express it back to somebody else because everything we receive from God God always says, share it with somebody else. So we are all called to do like Abraham and plant our own tamarisk tree. That somebody else could enjoy the fruits of our own labor. Wow. That's what I have for you this morning. Again, wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much. Wow. wow. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this is exactly what I've been telling you about. You see, the guy comes across so simple. He comes across so calm. You know, as we would say in Trinidad, chupidi chupidi, you know, but there, there's there's a lot of essence and power and substance in what he has to offer. And um, I really appreciate him for that. And that was that was really good. As Terence is saying on the chat, you know, Terence said, this lesson was very effective. You need help to misunderstand. You know, this this was beautiful. This was beautiful. And, you know, I love, I love, you see the, I, the reason why, I, 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 I cling to the tamarisk tree a lot is because up till last night, I was thinking about, I, I was in thought about, you know, passing things to the next generation, you know, how effective are we? 
how effective is the church in sharing the faith and and ensuring that the next generation that comes up is you know filled with that understanding and that knowledge of god and how, how effective are we in ensuring that the next generation would be stronger than we are you know and uh, this is actually a session that i'm planning for the future in label to have a discussion on this particular session you know and, and that's why i cling to the tamarish tree a lot because it's so amazing to see how you know you know randy was able to use the tree the tamarish tree to show you know abraham's faith in god because we do things and i i used to be like that you know and probably i'm i'm still like that you know i do things and i want to see the results of it not because uh maybe because i'm selfish but i don't think all the time i'm selfish but i just i just would like to be i just would i'm excited to see the the effects of it you know i'm excited to see you know what labor would do you know a few years to come you know how far labor would reach you know I'm, I'm i'm excited to see that when i start something that you know i can see the results i can see the effects of it happening around but sometimes like martin luther king you start something but the real deal happened after you're gone like jesus you start something but the real thing happened after you're gone you know like a lot of these great people out there you start something you plant the seed you you sow the seed but the tree grows and blossom and the real deal happens after you're gone so it's all about setting things up for the future future generations it may not be the next generation as randy said but the generation way after so and um you're correct you know that is that is when we get into the realm of you know selflessness you know we we're not just about us and not even about our faith but we're concerned about the faith of people we don't even know the faith of people that are not even yet in existence and that is a whole new level randy and i really appreciate that a lot bro i really appreciate that a lot you know so um guys we want to take time i need you to put some hearts in the chat ladies and gentlemen put some fire <laughs> put some fire in the chat for this one put some hearts in the chat for this one ladies and gentlemen this was your boy randy joseph and that is exactly what i said he can do that is what he did that is how god works through him god works through us differently and um he works through him in this in this kind of powerful unique way especially using the old testament and i appreciate him for that so put some hearts in the chat put some fire in the chat for your boy randy joseph for this wonderful lesson this morning as he spoke about the trees he spoke about three trees that that, that we can find in the wilderness of uh israel's wandering ladies and gentlemen so i'm um, a lot i'm seeing a lot of the hearts going up just last night sister said um just last night, some sisters and I spoke on the generations to come. All right. Okay. 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 Um, this is as simple as you could make it, my brother. Thank you for sharing this message. Yep. Yep. Just came in a few minutes, but my life is so already encouraged uh, by Brother Joseph's lesson. Thank you, brother. I'm just reading a few just to show the appreciation, you know. Amen. Thanks, Randy, for reminding us. How we should live as god's people god bless you and your family all right the question is what impact are we making in our children's lives to impact the generations that come after uh beautifully said beautifully said keith johnson said thank you brother randy you shook my tree this morning as an as an older preacher i am thankful for what god is doing through your ministry continue to glorify him my brother wow that was from keith diana said thank you randy for sharing to help us expand our knowledge of god's word all right very thought provoking i always think doing what i can do now i never think of how i will impact future gives me food for thought that's what we're talking about so um your word is not falling on deaf air people appreciate it we appreciate you a lot and we want to say thank you so much randy before you leave uh any final words you want to share with the people uh before you 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 are dismissed any any last encouragement you want to leave with your people here this morning uh, sure all these trees don't find um their true value outside of the wilderness. And so you never know that the tamarish tree is needed. 
um, until you are in a wilderness wandering. They don't need it in a good time because it's not a tree that you use every day. Mm. Um, the arar bush will always look beautiful until you experience a wilderness. And so you and I have to be very careful that during our good times, we don't waste it. Um, just enjoying the good times. But we have to prepare for when we experience our wilderness wanderings because those are the times where we will see whether or not we are just a our bush talking Christianity uh, or we actually believe in God or whether we are acacia trees that when hard times come, we know automatically to connect with God. And so I will want to encourage people use use your time where you have to build your faith. Because we all, at some point in time, have to walk through the, front, the wilderness to reach our promised land. And so we must be very, very mindful that whatever day God gives you, which is the day, you have to use some part of it to build your faith. Because if you wait till the wilderness, you wait too long. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. This is Randolph Joseph. And uh, this is what we have for you this morning as we spoke about these three trees that you can find and um he made some he made mention of something that is very interesting you wouldn't appreciate it until you're in the wilderness and um you know wow uh this this was just this was just amazing this morning and we want to thank god for using randy this morning randy thank you so much may god continue to bless you may god continue to bless your wife may god continue to bless your ministry and all that all the goals and the visions that you have for the church may god continue to use you and bless you and may god continue to bless you in your education as well i know you're further in that as well so um thank you so much for coming on randy as i said i've been looking forward to it and i appreciate it a lot and everybody on the chat seems to appreciate what you do every time all right so take it easy man have a wonderful day and may god continue to bless you man take it easy all right, ladies and gentlemen, so we want to thank you so much for sticking around and joining us in such a beautiful session. This was an amazing... Guys, just in case you, you missed anything, you should go over. You should go and look over this lesson. This is beautiful. This was well said, just laid out on a table. You know, I mean... He didn't have to put any forks on the table. He didn't even set the table with any forks, ladies and gentlemen. The guy came in. I didn't put any knife and fork on the table. He just set the food and everybody was just dabbling with their hands. You're just going in, you know, and you're busting up. is like roti, you know. So um, I just want to say thanks again to Randy and may God continue to use this guy in mighty ways. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, guys, you know, if you missed anything, go and look over on the video. It will be on youtube it will remain on facebook so just go on the page label with leo label tv network label tv network just go on the page and um you can find the latest video uh you can look over the video you can even share it with other people i want to encourage you to do that this morning share this video with someone else it's great encouragement it's great information you can share this kind of stuff with your preachers you can share this stuff with your leaders it is great great stuff ladies and gentlemen um that you can use uh for the building and encouragement and education when it comes to the scripture all right so we want to thank randy for this love lovely 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 bit of information so um this is what we have for you today tomorrow lord willing we're going to be having another guest coming on a young man that i met here in arkansas and um, he, he is another calm you know and simple guy and you know he 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 delivers really sound stuff as well and you know we have two uh uh sort of a uh, similar guys coming in um they're calm in their presentation but they're really sound um they are a bit different when it comes to um uh, you know the, the the because randy loves the old testament and he gets into it um you know the, the guy that is coming grant is coming tomorrow lord willing and he is he is he's he's a lot of he's practical you know he loves we're looking at practical stuff and how we can you know make changes you know and 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 you know this guy um he is he is a great one as well so we have some really good stuff this week and randy started us off really really sound this morning and we want to uh use those things as we go through life this is not just to hype you up and make you feel good in the morning you know this is for you to use this is for us to use throughout our lives you know i hope that it benefits us and benefits our children benefits our congregation so may god continue to bless 
bless you uh, with these programs. All right. So thank you so much for sticking around. And remember, you can always check out m and Homestore and see what they have to offer. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram and um, see what they have you to offer you uh, this day, ladies and gentlemen. We want to thank God for using your boy, Sydney as well, the producer. He continues to do a wonderful job in the production of labor. Without Sydney, this, what you're having before you would not be the way it is, all right? And we pray that God continue to bless him and strengthen him and use him, all right? Uh, thank God for Adrian as well, co-hosting. Um, on the days when I'm not on, Adrian is on the program uh, hosting the show so that we can keep this thing going all right so and you guys who are on the program thank you so much we want to say thank you for your contributions thank you so much for your support you have been supporting and contributing in various ways and we want to say thank you so much you have been awesome and may god continue to bless you and use you all right take care have a wonderful day and um Thank you so much for just being in our presence, being in our midst. And we're going to close with a final song this morning. All right. We just want to uh, uh, give a big shout out to uh, all those on the program that are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We want to give a shout out to you. And we want to say have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. Celebrate your birthday. Celebrate your anniversary all week. That is not that's not a problem. You can do that. We're going to allow you to do that. All right. And, um, you know. May God continue to bless you in many more years to come. Big up to my boy Eden, who is um, on here, who is here this morning. All right. Just say good morning. Just say good morning. Hi. All right. Eden is on the program here this morning. He's next here, next to me right here this morning. And and um, he just came in. All right. He, he wish he could have been here um, earlier, but he usually, every time it's time to wake up for the program, he is out cold and then when he wakes up dad you didn't wake me up for the program you know no, no. all right but um have a wonderful day guys and we're going to be seeing you i hope that you know um i could pass this on this program on to generations you know i hope that you know years to come you know someone else whether it may be eden or you know eden's children or whatever it may be people will be running label in in, in years to come that would be awesome that would be great all right but you know god is good take care have a wonderful day and we're going to be seeing you tomorrow, Lord willing. Bye-bye. Mighty is a God. Mighty is a King. Mighty is a Lord. The ruler of everything. Holy is a God. Holy is a King. Holy is a Lord. The ruler of everything, his name is higher, higher than any other name. His power is greater, for he has created everything. Mighty is a God, mighty is a no, king, a mighty is a Lord, the ruler of everything. Have a wonderful day, guys. Love you all. Bye-bye. Play ball.